Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Before we start, I'd like to ask everybody to please turn off their cell phones. <clears throat> I'm very honored to be here today to help the family do this, considering I'm part of the family. And usually we're, we're doing great celebrations and nothing of this nature. But this is what Linda would want, a celebration of her honor. My greatest thoughts of Linda are, are when she laughs. She, her face lights up and it was spectacular. She used to call me her favorite nephew and I used to call her my favorite aunt. Maybe it wasn't true, but that's what we called each other. Um, so we're going to hear from the family today, and uh, we'd like to start out with Karen Weiss, her daughter. Thank you, Randy. That means so much to me. As I look out and see so many familiar faces, friends and family, it's hard to believe we are here today for a memorial for my mom. It was important to her that we celebrate her and share our laughter. She taught me to always look for the positive. And as challenging as this is, I feel the love and the support to give me the strength to do exactly what she asked and celebrate my wonderful mother today and always. Now celebrating my mom is an easy thing to do. To know Linda is to love Linda, and she loved everyone that entered her life, even if it was for a short time. During a recent nurse visit, my mom looked at me and said in a very proud way, we've been together for 59 years, and we just looked at each other and laughed, thinking, how is that possible? So how is it possible to share 59 years of memories? All my mom wanted was her family, to be happy. She was such an easygoing person and wanted so little from everyone. She loved to laugh, sing, dance, take long walks, play games, put together puzzles, go to the theater, sailing, traveling, and sunsets in South Haven. And most of all, being with her friends and family, including all of her cousins, nieces, and nephews, and also always having her little drinky poo, vodka on the rocks. As our family grew and we got married, she absolutely adored her favorite son-in-law and her favorite two daughter-in-laws. I think my mom's proudest moment was when I told her she was going to be a Grammy. She looked forward to the calls, asking her to come over, and she would say, I'll be there in two minutes. When she got there, she would always announce herself loudly, I'm in and ready to come and grab a baby. She made each grandchild feel so special, and they all look forward to their Grammy days. The last few weeks have been tough. We saw my mom progressing and felt it was the best thing was to move her into my house. And thanks to Alma and Leticia, we had a strong support team. She always loved being with family, and she'd say, you are my best medicine. We were singing, laughing, and dancing till the end, leaving us with the most precious gift, her love. She is now re 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 reunited with my dad, laughing at him, I mean laughing with him, <laughs> hugging her sister and papa and grandma. My mom would always say, I have the best. Mom, you are simply the best. I love you so much. 
Now I'm going to call up Gera, my sister, to come share a few words. So um, I'm going to start out like my mom would and give you all a compliment. You look amazing today. And if you know Linda, you know that's how she would always start talking about you. So that's where I'm at. It's not lost on me that it's raining today. It hasn't rained in a month. My mom always said that rain is a blessing. And here we are, driving through Trudential rain to get here was the most beautiful rain I'd ever seen. But my mom had a unique request about today. And for those of you that are here, we all know Linda. She was incredibly smart. Her request was that we laugh. So you can imagine that since her last breath, the only thing I have been thinking about are the funny things that my mom and I and our families shared. So it's been a tough week, but it's also been a week of remembering all of the good times. That's my mom's brilliance. Her brains, her wit. I'm not a joke teller, but I'm gonna ask you to laugh anyways. My mom has told me that if at any time I'm nervous, while I'm speaking in front of other people, I am supposed to picture you all naked. <laughs> and at my age now, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. So, one of the stories that I remember the most was, it was snowing. Do we remember back when Chicago used to have snow? And I was in fourth grade. And I lived very close to the grade school. We walked every day, but this snowstorm was pretty intense. And she decided, I will drive you. I was so excited. And I usually walked with a couple of friends from the neighborhood. And my mom backed the car out of the garage. And I saw my friends on their way starting to walk to school. And I said, I got you all a ride. My mom's going to drive us to school. Now, again, it was only two blocks away from home. But we get to the top of the street. The Streets had not been plowed yet. And my mom turns the wheel to take a right turn, and the car starts to spin. Well, when we were all the way around this far, my friend started screaming in the back seat. My mom stayed totally chill, super calm, continued the spin all the way through to the 360, and we were pointing right down the street we were supposed to turn on. My friends were still screaming, but my mom just took a sip of her coffee. I thought she was the coolest. And for those of you that know, my mom was notoriously on time. Maybe not. She was extremely late most of the time, which caused her to drive quite fast. We used to call her Mama Andretti. Now, There are a couple of other things that I'd like to share. One of them being that my mom thought maybe the most important thing was laughter and love, but to laugh at yourself. And for those of you that know my family, you know that we've been through some interesting times for sure. And my mom taught me a really important lesson that I share as many times as I can. And that lesson is that acceptance does not require understanding. Acceptance comes from love. My mom taught me that. And with that, I live every day to help other people find acceptance, find friends. My mom grew. As she got older, she came from a generation that was not as open and accepting, but she was always curious, always growing always expanding her mind and always being accepting of other people. Those people are all in this room today. And thank you for sharing with our family. I am going to ask my awesome brother Ron to come up and share a few words.
Hello, everyone. My name is Ron. I am the baby of the bunch. I really can't believe that I'm standing here today and talking about my mother. I don't really know what can I say about my mom. If you knew my mom, you loved my mom. People would say family and friends are the most important thing in life. And for my mom, it was a very blurred line. If you were her friend, you were treated as her family. My mom had lots and lots of friends, lifelong friends, people from grade school, high school, kindergarten, and I always admired her for that. I, as a matter of fact, I have one friend from high school. We didn't even go to the same high school. And how could that possibly be? How could someone have so many such close, long, love friends? She was so easy to talk to. Whether you just met her or knew her forever, she had this feeling of warmth and understanding. You felt like you could open and tell her anything you wanted to tell her. And she listened. She paid so much attention that you felt like you were the most important person to her at the time. She would offer her friendship and advice without judgment. And whether you took her advice or whatever choice you did, whether you, you took her advice or not, whatever choice you made was the correct one. She was always such a positive person. She only found the good in everyone and in everything. And even in the end, she was in pain. She would say, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be such a better day. She was a selfless person, too. She would always say, hey, honey, if you're having a good time, I'm having a good time. She was also funny. She loved to laugh. It could be your worst day, and somewhere, somehow, she would find humor and make you laugh. She was always up for the good times, her ability to include people, to make them feel loved. The more the people, the more the friends, the more the family, the happier she was. I actually do know the reason why Linda was able to keep these friends for so long is because Linda was always working the phones. <laughs> Anytime, day or night, you'd walk into her house and she was on the phone. There was not one conversation we had without, oh, hold on, the other line is ringing. My mom single-handedly built AT&T. I don't know if you know this, but the very first cell tower ever installed was right in front of her house. I got lost, sorry. When I was growing up, I was asked, what would I wanna be when I grew up? And I always thought about that question a lot. And being at that age, I would ask my mom, mom, when you were my age, what did you want to be when you wanted to grow up? And she would always say, I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be the best mom. And that's all she wanted. She wanted to have a family. Well, a couple of days ago, I happened to have found her senior yearbook. She graduated in 1960. And incredibly, a lot of you are in it. It was amazing to me. But in that, way, in that yearbook, it asks, where would you want to be in 10 years? And for my mom, that would have been 1970. Well, being the youngest of three children, I was born in 1969, and so for only three years, she succeeded. She was a mom of three wonderful kids and had a beautiful family. She did exactly what she wanted to do. In reading her yearbook, I was shocked at her answer. 
It was not that she wanted to be a mother, actually. But it came no surprise to me that her answer was to be a social worker. And if you ask me, I think she had a great career. Unfortunately, it was all pro bono. You know, a lot of people talk about my mom, and one thing that I don't think a lot of people knew about her is that my mother was extremely competitive. Sure, when we were kids, she would let us win, but the older we got, the more cutthroat it became. Whether it be card games, board games, or even doing puzzles, she had to put in more pieces. The pieces that I would put in, they were just pieces. Her pieces were VIP. Very important pieces. She would call them vippers. Always put in the vippers. And she had to have the last piece. But when it comes to competitiveness, nothing compared to when she was competitive with my father, Myron. She would not let him win anything. I remember when we were little, little, little kids, we used to go to my grandparents' house a lot. I mean a lot. It seemed like we were always there. We would show up, and later my dad would meet us there after work. We would hang out with our cousins and our grandparents, my aunts. And when it was time to leave, we would all leave together. And the three kids, we had a decision to make. Do you want to go with mom, or do you want to go with dad? It was our choice. And without hesitation, every single time was, Mom, 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 we're going with Mom. Why did he do that? Well, it's because as soon as the engine started, the race was on. Other doors open, other doors closed, it didn't matter. Boom, she was gone. Oh, man, she was such a fast driver. As a matter of fact, if you've ever come south on the Eden's Expressway, you get off at Old Orchard, take a left-hand turn. Well, that was the way to our grandparents' house, and we took that trip a lot. And sometimes, the traffic would be backed up all the way down to the highway. Linda wasn't going to wait. There was no way she was going to wait, so what would she do? Well, she would turn into the right turn hand lane only, and she would time it just so you could hear the cars on the left-hand side as we're flying by them. And she would wait until that light was gonna turn green, she timed it perfectly every time and immediately cut off everybody and get into the left-hand turn lane and take the left. It was amazing. She did it so often we came up with a name for it. It was called the Linda Left. <laughs> and that's right, folks, my mom taught me that. So if you're ever sitting for 20 minutes trying to take a left at Old Orchard Road and some jerk cuts you off at the last second, it's probably me. And I apologize now for that. I mean, I do remember when she um, uh, snapped her axle going through the Toys R Us parking lot on the speed bump. I mean, how, how fast do you have to be going to crack an axle? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, here we are. We're piled into Linda's V8 Monte Carlo rocket ship. And if you know the Monte Carlo, the back seat was a vinyl bench seat. There was no in-betweens. No seat belts, of course. Karen got the front because, let's face it, she was the favorite. <laughs> Gara sat behind Linda, and I sat behind Karen. Rocket ship takes off. The first hard right hand turn, I start to slide over towards Gara. The left turn side, we would both start to slide back towards Karen. This would go back and forth all the way home. It was especially fun when there was two left-hand turns in a row because then we could actually push that person into the door. Made it a little bit harder. And then the best part, the best part that could ever happen, we moved to Barbary. When we moved to Barbary, up came the train tracks. I don't know if you've ever driven down Clavey by our street, and I don't know if you know this, but it is absolutely possible to get all four wheels off of the pavement when you go over those tracks. <laughs> there was actually air between my body and my seat. We had our hands up in the air so our heads wouldn't hit the roof of the car. 
and then my mom would make that right hand turn. We were still in the air from the trail road tracks. Whoever was on the left hand side was gonna get a beating. We were all landing on top of each other. I'm actually surprised the car doors didn't crack open. That was surprising. Some kids would fight. Who would get the middle seat? We would fight who would be on the left-hand side because there was more right-handed turns. We'd pull into the driveway, we'd run upstairs, change, get into bed, all before Myron would ever pull up. And that happened every single time. Every time she would not allow him to win except for that one fateful day. And I remember it well. It was a cold and breezy night. There was something in the air, I couldn't feel it, I couldn't put my finger, pinpoint it, but it happened. My mom was about to lose the race and lose hard. Now, there was no way my mom could ever give Myron the satisfaction of winning this race. She knew she would never hear the end of it. And she had to come up with a plan and how to fix this, and quickly. So we walk into the door, into the house, we open up the door, and you can see Myron, he's standing there, he's got a huge smile on his face, he knows, he finally did it, he won, he won the race. And with a little big smirk and a little sarcastic voice, he says, so where have you guys been? And with that, my mom held up a carton of milk, and said, oh, I had to stop at the store to get milk. I didn't know we were racing. <laughs> well, the look on Myron's face, so he could get the satisfaction of beating Linda was priceless. And the funny thing is, is, we didn't even need the milk. She didn't have to stop at the store. And to this day, I don't think Myron ever knew that. Well, he does now. So move on over, Myron, because she's in. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I had the most unique experience of being able to share my birthday with my mother. And I know technically that I was sharing her birthday with her, but she never made me feel that way. That day was a special day for me. No matter what I wanted to do, she was always there up for it, up to have a good time. People would ask me, man, that would suck to have to share your birthday with somebody. And after 55 years, 55, I only missed one birthday. And it was when she shipped me off to summer camp. It was not my fault, I missed it. I had no say in the matter. But honestly, I'm still a little upset. With one more birthday, why can't I have just one more birthday with my mom? You know, they talk about, my mom loved her drinks. She loved her four o'clock vodka. And this birthday, get ready, mom, because that vodka's coming, whether you were ready for it or not. She would always say to me, you are my best present. Ron, she'd say, hey, you are my best present. And a wise man once told me, the secret to success early in life is to pick your parents. And given the opportunity, I wouldn't have picked any different. So mom, no, you're my best present. When my mom started getting sick, we had the extreme pleasure to meet two of the most caring, loving people you could honestly have the pleasure of meeting. I'm talking about Letisa and Alma, her caregivers. I cannot express enough to you how much you have meant to us, the way you have cared and shared with love and dignity for my mom. It was truly something special to see. I really don't know how we have gotten through this without your love and support. I would like to thank everyone for attending here or online. The way you've all loved my mother means so much to us and to her, I know it was and now I've said this before, that Linda said she always wanted to be a mother. And 28 years ago, I learned very quickly that was absolutely not true. She fooled us all. 
what she really wanted to be was a grandmother. She just knew she had to go through us first. And boy, did she love her grandkids, each so, so very much. And I would like to call them up now. Bailey, Caleb, Alec, Sophie, and Gabriel. All right, hi everyone. I'm Bailey, the first and favorite grandchild. Uh, we are so lucky to have Grammy as our grandma. Grammy never failed to make us happy, from having tea parties from, with her fancy china or offering to buy me a puppy just because I thought it was cute. She, al she was always a part of big and small moments of our lives. Every soccer game, volleyball game, gymnastics show, she was there. Not only did she watch, but she was on the sidelines cheering me on. Keep it going, keep it going. I may not have noticed her come in, but I always heard her when she was there. Some of my best memories are from South Haven. I don't like to brag, but I am the reason that Grammy bought the South Haven house. From before I was born, Grammy and Papa were sailors. As soon as she gained Grammy status, she sold the boat and got a house. That was the beginning of endless memories of laughter, sunsets with ice cream, singing, and dancing. Grammy loved to tell us stories. One of them was when I was a kid, I was in a musical hula hoop contest. Grammy, all Grammy wanted was to see me win. Grammy was, oh, sorry, the music was playing and kids were walking in circles and as soon as the music stopped, all the kids ran to a hula hoop. Well, as soon as the music stopped, Grammy also jumped up, ran to a free hula hoop while pushing people out of the way, and yelled and pointed, Bay, over here, so I can stay in the competition. At the end, every time she told me this story, she would say, I just don't know what came over me. She was willing to fight five-year-olds so I could stay in the contest. This just goes to show the links she would go to make us happy, Keep us smiling and laughing. Grammy, you are my sunshine. Love you more. Caleb, I'd like to welcome Caleb. Thank you, Bailey. My Grammy, Linda, was the most funny, loving, and hopeful Grammy I could ever ask for. She used to take us to South Haven every summer. We would have Camp Grammy, weeks on end of South Haven with the three of us up there and then eventually all five. And the one thing that she could agree to get all of us to eat is Ritz crackers with cheese squirt, cheese whiz on top. Just the most delicious <laughs> after beach food. And one summer, Ritz ran this promotion where if you could get all four letters, R-I-T-Z, you win a million dollars. And Linda always loved the opportunity to win a million dollars. <laughs> So we buy our first pack, and inside there are four little packs, each of them with their writs, and we tear them all open and we sort through. We find R-I-T's, R-I-T in the first pack. No Z. The rest of the summer, we are opening packs of writs, looking for our Z. By the end of the summer, we had three stale writs on the counter, R-I-T, no Z. And we go to the beach and we're talking with people, Turns out every other family in South Haven was looking for their Z. <laughs> so when we thought we had a shot, we didn't, but we loved to hope for that Z. Before we'd go to South Haven, we'd always go to Grammys. And before there was maps, there was one place I knew where to get, and that was Grammys. One time my mom's family was in town, Jen's family, and they wanted to go out to dinner. And they said, Caleb, do you know how to get to Fuddruckers? I said, yes, yeah, I do. So we're going down 41 and we take the right. And we get off and I'm taking them to the one place I know, Linda's house. <laughs> and so we pull up in front of Linda's and they recognize, they go, this is Linda's house. And I go, yeah, okay, so now we keep going straight. <laughs> 
it was a second home. It was how I knew where to go, where to be. And Grammy had so many special words. I'd like to do a little bit of Grammy vocab with you all. She would always greet people and say, how do? How do? Not how are you doing, not hello, not what's up, how do? And you can choose to answer it however you want. You can say what's up, you can say I'm doing fine. How do? I'm in. She'd open your door, scream, I'm in. You could be in the middle of Rosh Hashanah. People are coming and going. Lynn walks in, I'm in. You knew as soon as she arrived and the party lit up. And the best. It was every part of speech. It was adjectives, verbs, nouns, the best. We were down at South Haven last weekend. It was the best. <laughs> I went to Alex volleyball game. It was the best. He's the best. Linda was the best. And she was also a little bit devious. She'd always just kind of push your buttons or get you to do exactly what she needed. I remember a few weeks ago, I was in town and she just moved into her new place at the Arbor. She was giving me the grand tour. We'd gone upstairs. We were watching the Olympics on TV. And she looks at me and goes, I wish I could watch the Olympics in my room. Oh, Grammy, you can't watch the Olympics? No, no one set up my TV. So I go, Grammy, oh, of course I'll help you set up your TV. And she takes me down in there and I look at her TV and it's this giant thing set up and all she could watch is the old movies channel. So she's watching black and white westerns on her couch in there. And I go to sign into her peacock. Just watch, you know, watch the stream. I don't know the password. I don't know my own password. <laughs> so I go to second option. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll look at the back. I go to plug in the coax kit, like the thing that gives it all the channels. And I search and I get 800 channels. I'm like, jackpot. We can watch anything we want. I'm like, Grammy, good news. We got all the channels. And I flip to the first one. It says channel locked by provider. And I go, Grammy, it's locked. She goes, that's what happened when Gara tried it too. <laughs> She let me fiddle with that TV for an hour before she told me that everyone else had already tried. <laughs> and it was those types of things. She loved to have us around. And she loved the hope. The other one that I always remember is, do you all know when McDonald's does the Monopoly promotions? We always would play. We'd always play. I remember all of us, we'd go, we'd get like whatever had the most little stickers on them. And without fail, the first thing we'd always find is Park Place. As soon as we find Boardwalk, we're millionaires. We're millionaires. And we'd spend the entire promotion hunting for our Boardwalk. Never found it. But every time I play, I think about Grammy and trying to get that Boardwalk. I'm going to miss her so much. Every hug, every phone call, every voicemail, she was always thinking about us. I have a voicemail full of, I'm just thinking about you, give me a call. And they're never gonna be deleted. I love her. Thank you all for being here. Alec. Hello, um, I'm Alec. I'm the third grandchild. Um, and as some of you know, I'm actually the favorite. <laughs> the most prevalent thing that comes to mind when I think about Grammy Linda is unconditional love. Grammy had the special ability to turn any of my moods into happiness. No matter how stressed, sad, or frustrated I ever was, Grammy was always able to uplift me and make me feel special. She really knew how to turn a frown upside down. It never really mattered what she said, just the fact that she was there to love me was enough. I always thought that the fact that Grammy's favorite color was yellow was so fitting for her because she really embodied what it was to be a ray of light, even in dark times. Grammy days were a big part of all of our childhoods. And as I grew over, older. I never wanted those Grammy days to end because of how much joy that it brought me just to be with her. Whether it was just going out for a brunch or lunch or walking in the botanic gardens, my time with Grammy always made me feel like the luckiest person on earth. Nothing can ever take away the time that I got to spend with Linda. And if there is anything I can take away from all that time with her, it is simply just to love more. 
She would always say at the end of any of our conversations, bye, I love you, I love you. I would respond with, I love you more. Then she would say, I love you more, and we'd go back and forth. I know that was a common thing for a lot of people, but I just think that it was something that she did that always made everyone feel special in their own way. To me, the best thing that I can do to honor her memory is to just love more. Everyone in this room has had a special relationship with Linda because of her ability to just love more. And I hope that each and every one of us can love just a little bit more in life. It can be just as simple as calling or texting a loved one just to let them know that you're thinking about them. That is what she would do, and there were just so many days when that was all I needed just to turn my mood around. Grammy, I love you so much, and I know you are always with me in my heart, and I hope to share that love that you gave to me with the rest of the world. Thank you, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm the fourth and, of course, the favorite grandchild. If you knew Grammy, you knew that she would do absolutely anything for us. She just wanted us to be happy. Some of my favorite memories are with her. Countless sleepovers, many trips to South Haven, weekly Grammy days, car concerts, and the best laughs. If any of you have been in the car with Grammy, you know she loved to sing, just always one beat behind always saying the lyrics after they played, and nobody knows how she did it. I had just discovered a new song by a female artist, and I asked Grams to play it in the car. After singing the song through together, I yelled at her that I wanted to just sing it by myself, but I would be nice and let her sing the male parts. Well, the male part was him singing, whoa, six times throughout the entire song. We were cry laughing in the car the entire way back as Grammy sang her woes, one beat behind as always, and I would sing the rest. She did it every time without hesitation, just happy to be a part of the song. Like I said before, Grammy just wanted us all to be happy, and she would do anything to make that happen. One weekend, Grammy had taken me to South Haven, where we spent my childhood summers on the beach eating Sherman's ice cream. I was a little girl and Grams had just bought me a new sand toy shaped like a turtle. I was on the beach playing with it as a seagull swooped down and took it. Well, Grammy jumped out of her chair, running after the seagull with her hands in the air, screaming at it to drop my toy because I was just devastated. It finally dropped my toy and Grammy ran to pick it up. She looked at the bird, yelled, son of a bitch, and turned around. <laughs> As she was walking back, the seagull flew over her head and pooped right on her, probably as some form of payback. As long as I was happy, she was happy too, even with bird poop on her head. Grammy, even though no amount of time would have ever been enough, I could not be more grateful for the love you have shown me and every single minute I spent with you was so special. I will never forget all of our memories and I will cherish them forever. I love you more. Hi everybody, um, I'm Gabe and even though it might not look like it, I'm the baby of the family, <laughs> just like Uncle Ron, just like Grammy. And even though a lot of people like to tell me how tall I've gotten, I'll try and keep this speech short. <laughs> um, whenever I think of Grammy, I think about how proud she was. She was proud of her kids, proud of her grandkids. She was always there, wishing the best for us and seeing that it happened. When she picked me up from school, which was pretty often, she'd have the same question every single time. What'd you teach the teacher? And I'd laugh, and then she'd laugh, because Grammy could always make me laugh. But writing this and looking back at it, I think she meant something else, too. In her Grammy way, that special Grammy way, she was encouraging me to bring my authentic self to the classroom and to every part of life. She wanted us to be who we were, to teach the teacher and change the world. If she could see us all today, she'd be so proud of us. Not for anything that we've done, but 
just for being ourselves. She loved each person here for their inner self and what they had to teach her. I think that Grammy knew that wisdom was learning from others and she loved to learn. She loved to learn about your day, about how you were doing, about if there was anything she could do to make it better. Well, Grammy, you made so many days better and brighter for everyone here. You are our sunshine, and I love you more. Thank you. We'd like to invite Linda's close friends, Betty Budnick, Susan Perlov, and Naomi Rothbard. Please join us. I'll get off. First of all, Caleb, Susie, myself, and Naomi also were asked. We tried to fix the TV. <laughs> we couldn't do it either. <laughs> it <is true>. Remember? <laughs> the three of us speak for all of Linda's friends. For Lynn and the friends in Florida, California, and here, which were many. Linda loved life. And Linda loved her girls' night out, which we called GNO. Which, unfortunately, due to our advancing age, soon became GLO, girls' lunch out. <laughs> Every so often, a very special person comes into your life and makes it so much better. This is how we feel about our 70-plus year relationship with Linda, friendship. As young teens, we were drawn together with laughter, and that laughter went on forever. It is hard to say goodbye to someone who has been such an important part of our lives for all these years. Linda was more than just a friend to all of us who knew her. She was a shining light who was always warm, funny, and kind. Her friendship taught us all to cherish each moment and each other. How lucky we all were to call her our friend. Goodbye, Goodbye dear, dear Linda. Linda. You, you will, will be, be in, our in our hearts, hearts and, and in our, in our memories, memories forever. forever. ask everyone to rise if you're able. On the back of the folders, you'll see the words of Kaddish. If you know the words, you can join along with us. Yiskadal v'yiskadash shemei rabah. V'yalmad yivrach yirusei v'yamulich machusei v'chai yechon v'yamei chon v'chai yedich obeis Yisrael ba'agala v'zman kari v'yimru amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mivarach Leolam Ulome Omaya Yisparach Vishtabach Vispar Vis Ramam Vis Nase Vis Hadar Vis Hale Vis Halo Shme de Kudusha Brihu Leilam in Kolbir Hosa Vishirosa Tush Bhasa Vinachamasa Damiran Bilman Viru Amen Yehe Shlomo Rabba Min Shemaya Chayim Alenu Vako Yisrael Vimru Amen Ose Shalom Bim Romav Huya Ase Shalom Alenu Vako Yisrael Vimru Amen The 
family will be holding Shiva for one night only today, from after the service until 9 o'clock tonight at Linda's daughter's house, Gera Goldstein, in Highland Park at 2871 Idlewood Lane. Please join us, and uh, thank you for being here. Uh, one last thing I wanted to invite all of you to please share in the flowers that are up front as my mom would have wanted to. Yellow was her favorite color. Feel free to pull any flower and take it with you, whether you're coming to my house or heading home, coming over later. But please take whatever you wish. Thank you. Thank you.